Hey everyone, Ryan here with Vapor Honing Technologies. Today we're gonna to be doing a brief overview of how to set up and use your Vapor Honing machine. Let's get into it. Now for this demonstration, we're gonna be using the VH700, but we might also hop over to a VH800 cabinet just to show you guys some differences as well as similarities. Up first on this cabinet, on the inside, what a lot of people don't know is this is actually the blast gun. So when you guys are ready to blast, this is where your high pressure water or slurry is gonna be coming out at. Also on the inside, you have your rinse nozzle. This is where if you have an open loop machine, it's gonna be pulling from that garden hose that you hook up to the machine. But if you have a closed loop machine, this is gonna be pulling from the basins and you can just use this to rinse down your parts after you finish blasting. Up top, you've also got your window rinse. If your machine has one of these, this is what is actually used to spray off the window to make sure you have clear visibility as you're blasting. Um, this also pulls from your basins or that garden hose that you have on the back. Now, regarding the basins, on the 700 here, they sit underneath. Um, on an 800 style cabinet, it actually sits beside the machine. Okay, and what happens is as you're blasting, it's actually gonna fill up with water on the inside of the cabinet, right? So whether you're rinsing the part off or whether the window rinse is just spraying, you're gonna be incrementally adding water into your hopper on the inside. So when you finish blasting, you need to allow the abrasive to settle in the hopper. And then, for instance, on this 800 cabinet, it's actually gonna drain automatically. But if we step back to the 700, you can see that it has a manual drain valve. And that's gonna allow the machine to actually equalize with your basins down here. Now, with the basins more specifically, you can see with this top basin, which is a little difficult to get out on the 700, but you can see that you have your overflow valve here. And what this is for is as the machine begins to expel that water into this top basin, it's gonna raise this water level and overflow into your bottom basin. That's why these are called sedimentation basins. And it actually allows that abrasive to be caught and this top one before it overflows into the bottom one, keeping your water cleaner. Now, if you have an open loop machine, you won't have those basins. This will just drain off either into a drain or into a bucket that you have sitting there, and you can actually dispose of that however you'd like. And see, the, the benefit of having an open loop machine is your machine is actually kept cleaner. The benefit of having a closed loop machine is if you're running any consumables like corrosion inhibitor, um, it's actually gonna stay in the system longer. So those are the two kind of differences there. Let's hop to actually filling your machine and using it. So you can actually just use standard water as long as your pH levels are fine. You can just use a normal pool pH tester kit to test that. Um, our water here is fine. So when you begin filling your machine, typically what I like to do is to just go ahead and open this front ball valve. That way as the machine fills up, it'll fill over. On almost all of our machines, you fill the machine to this top ball valve. You can actually check on our website to see exactly how much water you're supposed to put in your machine. But again, with almost all of them, you just fill it to this top ball valve. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin filling. And while it's doing this, I'll kind of walk you guys around the machine and show you what some of these features are, or what some of the, the systems are. So on the back of the machine here, on something like uh, a weekend warrior at the 700, you've actually got your window rinse timer here. This controls how long it waits between spraying the window. Up top, you've actually got your air solenoid here. This is what lets air into the cabinet. And also you've got your exhaust stack here. This is something that's gonna ship inside your machine. So you guys can actually take it out and put it on the machine whenever you receive it. And that was actually really fast. You guys can see we're already starting to overflow into this bottom basin which means that I can turn the water off here. And what I'm gonna do is allow that to continue to overflow because the last thing you wanna do is go ahead and start filling your basins up, the machine continues to fill it, and then you overflow it in your shop. So I'm gonna allow that to continue overflowing until it equalizes. Now that this is almost done draining, I can go ahead and close this off and begin to fill this up. So I'm gonna fill this top basin again to that overflow valve. And then when it starts to overflow into the bottom base, I'm gonna stop and switch. That right there is high enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this pump plate so that I can see what's happening here. 
and begin filling the bottom basin. And again, you can fill this from one to two inches from the top. That way you have a lot of water in your reservoir here. Additionally, before you get, begin filling these basins, you wanna make sure that the ball valve is closed on the side. That's one of the most common issues that people do is they'll go drain their basins, bring it back, put it below their machine, and the ball valve will still be open, and then they will flood their shop. With an 800 style cabinet, and I'll show you guys that in just a second, you also wanna make sure that those bottom ball valves are closed because you will flood your shop. And I can show you that while this fills, it'll take a second. Again, with an 800 style cabinet, you're gonna to wanna to leave this top ball valve open so that way it overflows just like it did on the 700. But you do wanna make sure that these are closed. And, and what these are actually used for, really quickly, I forgot to mention that, um, this bottom ball valve is actually to drain the entire machine out. So if you wanna do a complete machine change out, that's where all the abrasive and water is gonna come out. If you want to leave the abrasive in the machine, that's what this ball valve is for. Um, it's actually going to drain off just the water and leave the abrasive in your machine. All right, guys, as you can see, we are about one and a half inches from the top. That's exactly where I want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And that's going to be the correct amount of water to actually allow us to rinse our parts down as we blast and use that window rinse without running out of water. Now, if you continue to hold this internal rinse down, you are gonna use up a lot of your water. And you will begin to hear the diaphragm pump beat at a rapid pace. That means that you need to stop using this internal rinse, allow the abrasive to settle, and then drain your machine. Um, you've depleted this bottom basin if you hear that, that pump beating rapidly. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this up and actually show you guys how to use the machine. Now, for this machine, we're actually just gonna use a push to connect fitting, and it's as simple as just pushing it in. And just like that, you're connected. Now, we do have a regulator in line here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to keep that between 60 and 100 PSI for all our machines. Um, you can push higher on something like an HD, but just for our standard lineup, between 60 and 100 PSI is where you wanna be blasting. Now, you can actually go ahead and plug the machine in at this point. And it just, for the standard machine, is 60 hertz at 120 volts. Um, each machine on our website will specify the power requirements, so you guys can actually look that up. Um, and also, if you have an immersion heater, it's gonna be 220 volts, just to let you know. Now, when you're actually using the machine here, to turn the lights and pump on on something like the 700, it's gonna be on the rear right here. You guys can see these two switches. That's what that's for, um, is the light and the pump activation. On something like an 800, you've actually got the main switch on the side here. That's what that's for. Um, and on the Weekend Warrior, it'll actually be a similar style box on the left-hand side. So again, with the 700 here, I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize it. And at this point, you are actually ready to blast. So you can go ahead and grab your blast gun here. And so as you guys can see, when I step on the foot pedal at first, the window rinse is what's actually gonna spray out. So that's what's gonna be cleaning it. And as you can see, the blasting gun also turned on. So the pump, the foot pedal is what actually starts the pump. It allows the window rinse to begin its timer and it actually allows the air solenoid to open and so you've got your full blasting going on. Also on the inside here is remember, you have your internal rinse and again, this is what you can use to actually spray, spray a part down when you're finished blasting. And also, do not spray the actual blast gun right here at the window to clean it. That is going to scratch it. It absolutely will scratch it. What you can do though, is take your internal rinse and actually spray off the window to help see better. Again, do not spray your blast gun at the windows. A few other words of caution, do not put your abrasive in the basins. 
when you guys are filling your machine up before you use it, just take that abrasive bag, make sure that this ball valve is closed on whatever machine you have so that the abrasive can't overflow into the basin, into the basins. And then you can either lift up the floor and add it directly in or dump it directly onto the floor and just wash it down as you begin blasting. Um, I do have a video on how to add the abrasive to a 700, which it's the same for all machines. And I also have a specific video for a lot of our machines that will be on our YouTube channel and I will link those below so that you guys can find those. Um, this was just kind of general overview of how to use a vapor honing machine as well as set it up. Really quickly before you guys go, I just want to point out if you have something like a VH800FL, which is what this is right here, you guys are going to have the precision regulator um, that sits atop the machine. This is actually how you adjust the, pre the blasting pressure that you have. And also on the back of something like a VH800FL, you're gonna have your regulator on the rear. So if you get your mas machine and realize that the basins are not pumping as they should, that can actually be because this regulator on the rear is not set to the correct pressure. That pressure is 60 PSI. And again, that runs your overflow valve as well as your basins. Um, and it's also the same for something like an 800 base, which is what this is right here. Now it does not have the precision regulator, it has a standard regulator up front but it operates off the same principle. This is for your blasting pressure on the inside. And then on the rear is actually where the overflow valve and the basin pressure is set. Now, again, there's something else I wanna show you on the 800, and that's actually the wiper. Now, this does come standard on the 800FL. And when you are blasting, if it's set to one of these positions, all the way to the left is off, the center is on and all the way to the right is actually the, the fastest setting. When you're blasting, that's actually gonna actuate. I'm gonna go ahead and put some water on the window here. That's actually gonna actuate. And help you guys see a little bit better inside the cabinet. That's one of the best features of the 800FL. Um, it's actually the first plastic cabinet to be, to be able to get the window wiper. But I wanted to show you guys that really quickly. So hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, literally any questions, leave it below. You can also call us at 828-202-5563. Um, we will make a video on how to do it. For example, we have how to replace windows on a weekend warrior that we can send you guys once you have a machine, if you're looking to do something like that. A lot of it's not public, um, it's private. But again, if you guys have any issues or need those materials, you can call us at 828-202-5563 or hit us up on our contact form on the website. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great day. Peace.